despite their history-making performance over the week at U24s, ultimately, after all the hype, Belgium didn't manage to challenge the US in the final. So what went wrong for the Belgians? Well, the Belgians did pretty well in the early stages, managing to trade up until fives, with an early break and a break given up. Watch the US's smooth offensive point here, breaking open the Belgium zone with a crucial hammer, whilst we take a look at the distribution of players used to get here. Of the first 10 points, 5 were offensive points and 5 were defensive points. Toby de Cran played all the offensive points and crossed over for one defensive point. Whereas Dan de Marais, who normally plays defence, played all the offensive points and crossed over for two defensive points. Is that necessarily a bad strategy for the Belgians? No, Revolution did the same at work and that was a very successful strategy for them. The problem was that these Belgian stars had already gotten serious minutes across the rest of the tournament instead of being rested. Belgium tried to respond by converting their O point to stay on serve, and after swinging back and forth for not a whole lot of yards or flow, Gayson van der Broek finds himself free after Albert Yuan and Johnny Sickles fail to switch. Van der Broek gets the disc, has no mark, looks downfield, and sends the huck to Toby de Cran. And then Toby does this. One up into the air, but that's going to be out of bounds. The attempt, oh my goodness gracious me! Did that work? I didn't see his feet, but the Belgians celebrating a greatest from Toby de Kahn. What just happened? What just happened? But hold on, hold on. The Americans are calling it out. And after a quick check with Nathan Kalakovic, they decide that Toby jumped from out of bounds, meaning the goal won't count, sending the disc all the way back to the sideline. American possession, just 20 yards out from the end zone. The US center, move the disc to the break side and advance forward with ease, not a single Belgian defender getting anywhere near a bid. They advance towards the end zone and then finally pop the disc into Conieris for the goal. A massive turning point in the game. That's 7-5 and the Belgian heads full. In the next point, the Belgians work calmly up the pitch, churning up the yards from a signature sliding grab from Toby de Cran and then the deft inside flick to Dan de Marais after a stoppage. Belgians slip through the middle of the field, making small and well-timed cuts and manage to work it all the way into the end zone, but this travel call on Dan de Marais sends the disc back. They go just walking down the pitch. Van Muller, there's a travel call, so that one is going to come back. Is it a travel? Yeah. Does it really affect play? No, not really. It certainly doesn't affect this open side pass made by Dan, so the disc could stay with the assister. Instead, the disc goes back to De Marais, but this time the Belgians really struggle to make forward progress. You can see from the drone angle that the Americans are poaching off the breakside handler and sitting in the breakside lane, allowing a yard losing swing, dissuading other cutters from using the break space and complicating the hammer option. The Belgians get pushed back, unable to punish the breakside poachers, which blocks De Marais' cut and then Van der Broek's cut, and stops a really valuable backwards pass to Jonkers coming through the middle with good vision of the end zone. The Belgians get pushed back again, De Cran takes some yards on the open side, and Itai Chang poaches off Van der Proek to threaten the lead pass to De Marais. This leaves the hammer on. De Cran recognises this, perhaps too quickly, and the disc falls out of Van den Broek's grasp. On the turn, the downfield defence is actually quite good for the Belgians. It's in the handler space that the US looks so, so comfortable though. The certainty of having that free dump whenever means that the US don't really need to take any risky shots. Obviously, a game plan for the Belgians is to pass off the deep cuts to Toby de Cran, with Jonkers and Dame Ray successfully making clutch switches to contain the deep shot and to try and keep the pressure up whilst keeping the strongest deep defender as the last man back. It all falls apart though when Toby is expecting in trying to induce a switch with Van Mullen, but Van Mullen is not aware enough and too locked in to make the switch. This leaves Turner Allen completely free. Toby doesn't really put much effort in to catch up and six quick passes later and the US score and take half 8-5. After half, Belgium prove they can pass it up the field for yardage, opening up the field with the hammer. Jonkers is tempted to this risky poached deep shot that Dan asked for Jonkers actually executes very well, but the margin for error is low. Dan doesn't box out quite as well as he needs to, and Scott Heyman makes this unbelievable over-the-shoulder clean block. Going the other way, the Americans can't get out of their own end zone, 
Then, Gaten van der Broek comes up the inside of Sickles and gets a massive layout D, but a foul is called. On the replay, it's hard to clearly see the contact, but in the conversation, van der Broek doesn't disagree that he made contact, he just thinks that he got to the disc first. Which, I mean, like, yeah, he, he does, but if he makes contact first, then... Well, it's sent back. Here, the Belgians just play 50 seconds of really, really good defence. The Americans are not generating sustained flow, not gaining many yards. There are three successfully executed switches. The fourth switch is good, but does leave on an easy swing. And it's on switch five of the possession that De Marais wants a handler switch, but doesn't get one. He fails to put on the mark and the US decide to take this opportunity to jack it deep, the throw falling just outside Frankie Fernandez's hands. Toby starts fast and dribbles up the sideline with De Marais. Everyone on the field is knackered and a lapse of concentration causes Ben Yonkers to drop a routine catch. It's much of the same for the Americans on the turn, just swinging around in the handler space, but I do like that the Belgians are trying to buzz switch and poach here. Maybe it's the pressure in the handler space, or maybe he just backs himself, but Sickles launches this blady flick speculator to Frankie Fernandez, but this time he manages to reel it in. 9-5, and it's hard work for the Belgians to make up the yards, and they can't get into steady flow, but they're retaining possession until another hammer hits the turf. Again, it's Itai Chang who displays fantastic awareness with this poach off onto the easier swing to the centre of the pitch, and perhaps even bigger credit to KJ Ku, who is heads up enough to get eyes on the hammer and swipe at it, contributing to the drop from van der Broek. Ku goes straight deep and catches in the end zone. 10-5, and let's be honest, that's pretty much game over. The Americans roughly traded till the end of the game, finishing 15-9. So what problems do the Belgians need to address from this tricky game against the USA in order to help them to do one better at the European Championships? One problem for the Belgians was the lack of squad depth. Forget to play half of their roster, they recognised that some of their players were elite and some were just very good. At EUC, obviously their squad depth is going to improve significantly. This lack of squad depth directly contributed to the second problem. Everyone, especially the top players, were tired. And that's because of that lack of squad depth. But it's also because of games like the 13-12 slog against the Japanese and the irrelevant 15-14 game against Australia, where they really could and should have just rested legs instead of being drawn in by the Aussies. The Americans were the complete opposite, every team they faced were dispatched easily, and all the players got even-ish playing time. The Belgians have already had some long, hotly contested games at EUC, like a universe point loss to GB and a 15-3 victory against Italy where they were tied at 13th. Problem 3 is a symptom of this fatigue, and that's uncharacteristic decision and execution errors. When you're tired, you make worse decisions on the field. That's almost universal. It's pretty well documented. But perhaps more overlooked is how fatigue can play into the setting yourself up to play a mentally resilient game. Those decision errors did seem to unsettle some of the Belgians. But the positive for EUC is that these Belgian lads have now had elite finals experience and will know what to expect. And finally, problem four, the Belgians failed to exploit the US breakside poaching, with the same poachers elongating points, stifling flow and losing yards, and flash poachers inducing turnovers on hammer shots. It'll be harder to poach off players with the Belgians' increased squad depth for EC, but they still will need to address if they want those poach handlers to push through downfield and become cutters, or stay poached in the handler space and try to generate some flow using that separation. If you're watching this video in the day of release, then the Belgian senior national team will be competing in the European Ultimate Championship semi-finals and potentially the finals today. The stream's on ulti.tv. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.